Hey y'all, this is Ryan Van Ruckel, field agronomist in Southern Iowa. And I wanna to talk to you today about variable rate seeding your soybeans. And you might've tried this in corn, but if you haven't tried in soybeans, I really encourage you to try. It works very well. We've had a lot of experience, a lot of local trials on this, and uh, it's something that I definitely encourage uh, for most fields. Now to talk a little bit more about that, I've got some pictures and some slides and some examples that I wanna show you. And uh, here's one example just to illustrate soybeans, how flexible they are. And everybody wants plants that look like that one on the right. You know, that big, bushy, tons of pods. And that's an incredible looking plant. And that's easy to do. If you want to do it too, just drop 60,000 seeds per acre and you'll usually get some big old plants. Now, don't actually do that though, because chances are you're going to hurt your yield and you're going to have more weed pressure poking through that gap. Uh, but it just illustrates how flexible soybeans are. They can really uh, fill in for gaps much more so than corn can do. An example of that is some pioneer data that we got. And Jim LaFrance summarized this for us from Iowa population results. And you see a slight yield bump, a couple bushels there to go from 120,000 up to 150, and then pretty flat, and then a slight decrease to 210,000. But again, that's really not that much of a curve. There's really not that big of an effect. And so that just illustrates how flexible soybeans are. Now, also note those yield levels. These are 70 bushel beans. And definitely when you get into high yield levels, those plants have the ability to branch and fill in and flex like that. And you can get away with some of these lower populations. That 210,000 example, there are some areas of some fields that will never ever be able to branch and look like that, even if you drop 60,000 stands, which you would never want to do anyway. In those more challenging areas, those soybean plants need a little help. They need a little help to get taller and to close the rows and to fill in there. And so increasing seeding rate in low yield zones has actually been very beneficial in, in uh, our experience and in our trials. So much so that we developed the tool, the variable seeding tool within uh, Corteva Fields and From Pioneer. Uh, it has a chart that looks somewhat like this. And so you put in kind of your average local standard there at the blue line, say 150, 160,000, and it will increase your seeding rate as you get in the lower productivity zones towards the left of that chart. As you get into the high yield zones, high, high productivity, you can lower your seeding rate, but you see that's not a straight line. Uh, in our data, you gotta be careful about lowering your seeding rate too fast. And we see a bigger yield gain by increasing your seeding rate. So you see that that line's not perfectly straight. Now, let me show you a couple of real world examples. So here's a, couple high yield checks, uh, some variable rate check blocks that we have. And in both instances here, the 140 uh, yielded uh, actually a little better than 165, certainly no worse. And same story on the bottom, the 150 was uh, a touch better than the 170, again, certainly no worse. So that's showing us that in high yield zones, you can get away with lower populations just fine. And we've seen this in a lot of strip trials and a lot of variable rate checks just like this. But as you go into the lower yield zones, it's a different story. And so on the top example, I've got a 190,000 seeding rate was actually four and a half bushels better than 150,000. Uh, this was in a poor soil and this was planted late in June. And so both of those things would favor high, higher seeding rates. And same story on the bottom there is uh, even though this is a high yield field, if you have a really wet, challenging spring, Sometimes a little bit higher seeding rate is gonna, gonna allow for a little higher population, a little higher yield. In this case, the 150 uh, was better than 135 in that example, even though it was a higher yield area, higher, higher yield zone. So this is where your local know-how know and being adapted to the conditions really helps. And if things aren't quite right, right and, and you don't really like the script we have written, you don't hit that monitor and bump it up 10% as you go, if you're really pushing your luck or you get into June. Uh, so again, let me show you an example of what this looks like. To start with a variable rate script, you start with a yield goal. And so in this example here, we got a 65 bushel yield average is our goal and attainable in this field in past history. And we use that grow, grower yield index, it spreads that yield data over a field, over those soil types. And so you see there's some of these have some straight lines, some 90 degree lines in there. That's not a soil type zone. That's your yield data breaking up that zone into different buckets. And so here's a zoomed in version of what that looks like. This little zone off to the east of this field, they're both Maxburg silty, lay, silty clay loam, same soil, but 
part of that remains very high yielding. And we're, this uh, is predicting a 73 bushel average on the top there. But as you roll off the side of that hill, it's not picked up in a soil type difference, but in our yield data, we do see that that far east side does yield less. And in this case, predicting a 59 bushel average. And so then when you roll that into the actual variable rate script, it spreads it across the field. And so in this example, you've got a calculated average around 152,000 going down to 130,000 and up to 180. And you put the higher seeding rates in the low yield zones again help those plants get a little height, help them fill in where they can't branch because they're in a lower yield zone. On the top, big part of that field that's very high yielding, we're doing a lot of 130,000 seeding rate. You know, and this would apply if you're using uh, some seed treatments, if you're doing a little bit of tillage, uh, you're not planting crazy early, when things can go well and when things are gonna yield well, that, that's okay. And we've shown that in our data. But again, if you get in challenging situations or late planted, you're gonna wanna bump that up. There are some side hills, if it's really bad, you could probably go higher than that. And I've, I've seen up to 190, 210 uh, has paid in some examples. So again, it, know your field and it's gonna vary by field. So for this grower, not every field's going down to 130 or up to 180. Each varies it by field by field, which is what I would encourage. So with that, know that a uh, variable rate script is available to you. It uh, comes with each bag you buy. Thank you for buying those bags, by the way. And just reach out to me, uh, your agronomist or your sales rep, and we can help get you set up. But again, be prepared to work with us on this. It does take a little bit of work on your end too to help us set this up and help fine tune these for your area, but it's not too bad. Uh, but again, let's uh, let's get on this sooner than later uh, because I don't want you waiting on me for a script when uh, whenever the snow melts and we can start planting. So thanks again for the time and best of luck to you this spring. That concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.